face ripping rally on the JSC. Thank you, GNU, but can it hold? ETS for SA Inc. investors, Rand under 18. RSA retail savings bonds are going to be lower in July. Local CPI, 5.2%. No change from FOMC and trading as a side hustle. Hello and welcome to JC Direct. We're episode 592 for the 20th of June. Yeah, June it is. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by just onelap.com. Uh, so let's start with that face ripping rally. So we know the backstory, right? Friday was the swearing in uh, of members of parliament, then a speaker, a deputy speaker, and ultimately the president. That ended at midnight after starting at, what, 10 o'clock on uh, Friday morning, and we got our, they're calling it a government of national unity. So far, it's the coalition government. It's the ANC, the DA, and the IFP. We've seen some early indications from KZN where important uh, uh, ministries within the province uh, were given to the DA. They got local development. They got the finance MMC, which is not any significant. And we saw our top 40 on Tuesday up 3.5%. That is giant. I mean, that is just a really, really big day. The only sort of previous big day like that in the last many years, which was of our own accord. We've had some big days thanks to other stuff happening. Previously, that would have been uh, 15 February 2018. Remember, then President uh, Jacob Zuma resigned on Valentine's Day and Cyril Mopoza took over. So we've had a, a, a giant day yesterday. Today, not too bad. It's coming back a little bit. I mean, it's 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 off the highs from earlier. We were almost 2% up today. Uh, we were trading just off all-time highs on our major indices. They've all sort of paired back some of the gains. Resources are up today because the RAND at 18 is, uh, shall we say, causing some stress for resources. Let's start with the RAND. Where can the RAND potentially go? We've got to understand that this is a... Uh, 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 what do I want to say? It, it, it's a marathon. This is not a sprint. This is a five-year coalition. Now, it could all collapse. It, it, you know, we could wake up any morning in the next five years, and it has collapsed. But if it doesn't collapse, if it holds for the five years, and let's be clear, there's going to be periods where we think it is collapsing. It's going to require some significant maturity from our various different leaders. Uh, and as I say, there will be times when we think it's going to collapse, particularly if you are on Twitter. But otherwise, broadly, this could hold. And what this means is that this is like day one of the Comrades Marathon, right? You've got almost 90 Ks to run, and man, you haven't even left Durban yet. Like, that's how much further it's got to go. And there's a lot of wiggles across the way. Our market could double in the next five years. That's just 15% a year. Yeah, 15% uh, uh, a year is entirely possible. It, it's not completely and absolutely crazy. We saw uh, JP Morgan upgrade South Africa from underweight to overweight. Forget neutral. Just went all the way through. We haven't yet seen foreigners coming in in big numbers. But again, if you go back to the Comrades Marathon analogy, we're still running in Durban, man, and we're going to Maritzburg, which is almost 90 kilometers away. So th there's a long way to go. If you've missed the bus, if this is a proper bus, there's lots of time. I am in particular looking at the Finney 15 uh, at this point in time. Finney 15, which is J212. Uh, there it is. Uh, it ran away from me. I was actually bearish on this. If you listen to the first podcast of this year with Mark Ashton and Keith McLaughlin, we do a, a look ahead. And my one of my calls was the Finney 15 would be negative for the year. I was doing very well. And then, well, things just turned around. And now I'm not looking so smart. But I'm not jumping on this. There is time. There is plenty of time. Obviously, uh, pure SA inks have absolutely stormed out the door. We have seen all the retailers. ShopRite, which I hold, hit an all-time high uh, on Tuesday. Mr. Price and Fashini Group, which I hold, both did incredibly well. Uh, Truvers, all the Spur, all of them. Uh, the, the number of 52-week highs was pages long. So can it last? It absolutely can. Now, what are we doing? We're betting on politicians. So far, so good. But let's also be clear. I mean, this coalition isn't... I mean, let's go back to the election, which was, was it three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago was the election. We're three weeks into a five-year process. 
a lot can go wrong. I am, I suppose, I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, I was going to say I'm underweight. I don't know what weightings should be. I don't know where I should be in terms of weighting. Uh, I hold, you can go to simonbrown.coza, you can see my portfolio. I certainly hold some SA Inc. Tomorrow, yesterday rather, I wish I was holding a whole lot more. Of course I do. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Uh, we saw those moves. They were absolutely epic. So far, so good. I think it can hold. I think the Rand can certainly go stronger. Uh, 17 is definitely on the table. The thing with the Rand is that's going to show us foreign money coming in. Now, we've already seen a little bit of foreign money. Again, it's early days. Uh, there was a bond auction for 10-year bonds on uh, Tuesday. It was six or seven times oversubscribed, 35 uh, basis points better than the previous auction. Foreigners are saying, huh, this gets inter interesting. But this is going to take time. You know, JP Morgan upgrades us from underweight to overweight, but that doesn't immediately just flick a button and money flows. They distribute notes to their clients, to their investment committees. They're going to go and say, well, which do we buy? Is it just the ETF? Do we pick and choose? There's a whole lot that's going to be happening still. This is going to take some time. For those who are saying, hey, I missed the button, what's the ETF we want? JustOneLap.com slash ETFs. There are a couple of local ETFs which are very much SA Inc. focused, some more than others, and that the more than others really depends on how much uh, Rand Hedge dual listed miners do they have. Because if you've got a stronger round, that takes some shine off that. So the Finney, very much so. The mid-cap, to a very large degree as well. Divi Plus, too many miners sitting in there for my particular liking. So at this point in time, things are looking great. Uh, and you know, am, am I going to be coming back here every week and say things are still great? No. We're going to come back some weeks and say, ooh, things are ugly. But there's some easy wins. One of them is load shedding. We've had, what, almost 80 days, or 90 days of no load shedding. Again, I would remind you that uh, ShopRite spends a billion rand a year on diesel. So 90 days means that they've saved 250 million rand on diesel. Now, they had to then go pay ESCOM, but that's a big savings for them. And there are other sort of easy wins. But the legislative change and, and those sort of things, those are going to be slower. They've got to meander their way through Parliament. They've got to get to the relevant ministers. They've got to be pushed out to DGs and ultimately to uh, people on the ground to make them happen. But, I mean, definitely a positive outcome from the election in terms of the markets so far, and we will absolutely take this. Um, it's going to be bumpy, but uh, it's looking good at this point in time. Uh, it's something I want to touch on. The RSA retail bonds, which I talk about fairly often, they're a great product. I hold some of them. The rate for uh, June is 11.5% for the five-year fixed. That will change at the end of the month, and we will go into July. Uh, equally so, if you want to reset, you have to do that by the 20th. In other words, if you're listening on Thursday, buy today. Now, here's the thing, uh, and let me switch this to the five-year rather than the 10-year. If we got a daily chart here and we go to last day of May, the close was, let's call it 9.3, uh, and we effectively got a rate of 11.5. So call that 2.2% higher than what the five-year bond was actually trading at. Right now, that bond is trading at 8.5. So call it 2 and a quarter. We're suddenly going to get a 10.75. So we're going to go from 11.5 to 10.75. If you have one that is more than a year old, you can reset, but you've got to do it by the 20th of the month. I am resetting ours. My wife and I have, we took it out in April 2020 at 11 and a half. We reset it late, I think November 2022, again at 11 and a half. And we've now put the application into reset again for another five years at 11 and a half percent. If you don't have and you've been thinking, I'm interested in that rate, uh, let me find out some more information. Maybe I should grab it. The July number at this point in time, and let's be clear, there's still days left in June, is looking to be about 0.75% lower. So if you were wondering, maybe time to stop wondering and to jump and uh, bite the bullet. Remember, it's income, so it's taxes, income. You get your 24800 or 34500 depending whether you're under or over 65 years as tax-free. But in the meantime, it's, I think, well worth having a look in that regard.
We've got events coming up. We had to change some dates. We've added some new ones. The one that is this evening, which is the 20th, uh, is uh, trading as a side hustle. Uh, 9 July, that's the one we had to shift, is income investing from One Invest's ETFs. And then 18 July is defensive uh, local and offshore income portfolio. And I stress the defensive part. You don't want to go buy a Thungela because it's not that defensive. Justonelap.com slash events for more information and for booking. All events are free. All events are webcast. Uh, and the power hours are this t today and again on 18 July are also equally uh, available as uh, uh, webcasts. So the big story, or maybe it's not a big story, but it's an important story, is inflation. Uh, what we have had is the FOMC last week did not change rates. That was not unexpected, although we had seen a decent uh, U.S. inflation number for May. Uh, came in a little bit cooler than expected. That excited the market. Dot plots, which is a phrase I'd never heard of until a year or so ago, suggests a uh, probability of only one rate cut this year out of the U.S., although maybe two. But certainly the hiking cycle is over. The question is when do they start cutting? Locally in South Africa, our inflation came out today, which is Wednesday. I'm recording Wednesday afternoon. And we got a, a decent number. I mean, I don't want to say it knocked it out the park. It was 5.2% for May, which was unchanged from April. But we're staying in the right place. So firstly, we're nicely within that three to six band. Now, of course, the good governor says, band by hand, don't care. Uh, four and a half is what I care about. So yeah, we've got a little way still to go to the 4.5%. But we're definitely moving in the right direction. And that's partly why I've been buying retailers, right? There are a couple of stories behind the clothing retailers. I, I, I get the story. I wait for the breakout. I've got Mr. Price. I've always held uh, ShopRite. I tried uh, pick and pay. I got stopped. I don't like the restructuring idea. It's fine, but from a price perspective, I just can't work out how that is going to necessarily work. Um, and I've also got the Fashini Group. Let's roll forward 12 months. And I spoke about it last week a whole bunch. Uh, let's say We've got interest rates at least probably at least half a percent, maybe as much as one percent lower. Uh, by the MPC target, we've got inflation at four and a half. But something else we've also got, and I spoke about it uh, two weeks ago with the two pot system that comes in on first of September. A lot of people are going to be drawing out their money. It's only thirty thousand at max, and it's fully taxable. But that's going to put a couple of tens of thousands of rands into a lot of South African pockets, and they're going to spend it. Some of it's going to be on Zanzibar, some of it's going to be on holidays to Kabecha, uh, and, and some of it will be on clothes at Fashini or Mr. Price or dinners at Spur or famous brands or wherever the case may be. But that really is the story. And it's why I was, I, I was not bullish banks at all. I, I still worry about the, the bad debts, which is still a lag that is coming. Uh, but I certainly like the retailers, and we've seen the evidence on that. Those stocks have absolutely stormed. I mean, if we I'll quickly call them up, as I said, there's there's two that I am holding. Uh, Mr. Price is one. My entry on Mr. Price was about 168 or there's about. Let's pull that there. So my Mr. Price entry is about 168. It was back here, beginning of the year. It's now 209, sitting pretty. The Fashini Group uh, the break was on Friday. My entry was, is that the Fashini Group? Yep. My entry was around 116. We're now at around 130. These were relatively easy. Now we're going to have to get a little more cunning in terms of, of where we're going to find opportunity and value. One I'm looking at and I hold is Purple Group because markets are running. People got a little more disposable cash. Folks are going to be, hmm. And they're going to go and do more transactions. I, I've worked at stock brokerages before. Now, this isn't all happening. I mean, Purple Group didn't suddenly get a million new accounts and quadruple their daily volumes yesterday. But roll it over the next 12 months where our GNU sits together and everything stays looking good in that regard. Uh, we've got inflation coming down, interest rates. You've got your 30,000 rands from your two pots. You know what? Don't take your 30,000 rand, but most of you are going to ignore me. So whatevs. And then we're sitting in a position which is like, 
there's going to be more money flowing in. They're going to do more more transactions. I mean, we've had a really depressed period for brokers. Uh, PSG Consult is another that is potentially worth having a look at in that regard as well. We might see something coming through there. Uh, maybe not, but certainly there is potential. And that's really, more than anything, I think, what we're looking for, that possibility. And then let the price action tell you what's happening. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Disclaimers out the way, slightly shorter show today because I'm hosting Stockwatch uh, Mondays and Wednesdays this week, next week, and the week after because Julieta Talevi is away. Uh, so if you are it depends when you listen to this. I will be on your TV screen, 630 BDTV channel, 412. I think that's the right channel to look at. Yep, 412, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays for the next couple of weeks at 630, uh, doing Stockwatch. If you've got questions, you can tweet me as well. Simon PB is my handle on the Twitters. Does anyone call it X? No, no one calls it X. We'll park it there. My name is Simon. We'll be back again next week. Until then, look after yourself. And as always, if you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers, all. Cheers, all.